this is an interesting tweet that has gone semi-viral in my little sector of the internet, which is sneakerheads who waste too much time wanking and pontificating about flipping shoes online. Um, this guy called Brandon Dune, who's a host of a podcast about sneakers on Complex and also does the news reporting on there and stuff. And, you know, it's generally a bit of a sound guy, a little bit of a dork, but, you know, dorks are sound and fun, especially when it comes to stuff like shoes and whatnot. And he wrote this tweet that I thought was absolutely hilarious because... I'm going to kind of link it to what's going on with Draymond Green and that Jordan Pole thing and also link it to another story that I heard some other American football player saying. So this Brendan Dune guy said in response to the recent documentary that Kanye put out, which is called Last Week, which is basically a kind of vlog thing that kind of surmises what happened, quote unquote, last week. And he also has in that little 30 minute documentary a scene of him basically berating the Adidas executives. And before he does, as a little power play, he plays this porn on his phone, like super loud. And he's got it on full screen. He actually rotates his screen to so it's like a landscape view. And he basically is, is kind of doing a bit of a power play and telling one of the guys in the meeting that this guy in this video sounds like you. So I guess he's watching some European porn. I guess, you know, Kanye likes to watch porn of what, you know, those, you know, those kind of tasteful European porns where it's like shot in an amazing studio and the people in it look like they could have been models or one of them's a creative director or one of them owns a boutique or like owns a restaurant, you know, that kind of vibe. So maybe that's what Kanye was on. And he was showing him this video with this guy talking and he's, oh, this guy sounds, this guy sounds, this guy sounds like you. Like just really kind of creeping him out and doing a power play thing. And then I guess some people weren't happy with that because, you know, they just weren't happy with it because they got annoyed with it. <laughs> and one of the people that wasn't happy with it was Brendan Dune. So the following, if any other Adidas partner was doing that shit, that Ye is right now, the foul t-shirt and the anti-Semitic tweets, they would have, they would have rushed to cut ties. They've dumped employees for far less, can't hold people to different standards when it comes to brand values. Now, in theory, I agree with this, Right the world should be fair how i get treated as a um marketing assistant at adidas or as a brand assistant for no or as a head of nike energy global or something at nike or as a head of special products at converse whatever it may be i should be treated this, the same way as you know the blondie mccoys who do the stuff and whatnot or the whoever else is sponsored nike i don't really know you know what i mean like they should treat me the same way they should treat them or they should treat them to whatever it may be, right? Cool. But we know the truth of it. The truth of it always is that the talent always get treats differently than anybody else, especially the star talent or the star players. And I take it back to the whole Draymond Green, Jordan Paul thing. I'm sure most of you have seen it. And again, I'm not even a watcher of basketball. I can't even tell you the rules of it. I just know some of the players, but a clip went viral of Draymond Green from the Golden State Warriors and his other teammate in practice arguing. It looked like from a CCTV camera with no audio. They're arguing, they're having a back and forth. Um, the Jordan kid decides to say something, um, which then gets Draymond Green to come over. Jordan Paul then pushes Draymond Green and then Draymond Green with no hesitation launches into like a semi-flying Superman punch which knocks him straight out of his feet and he kind of holds him up as he's about to go down. So it's a crazy, crazy punch because the kid was completely out, right? And I was watching enough UFC to know that his knees completely went and he was absolutely out, out. So obviously that's happened and there was loads of rumors about, oh my God, they can't be on the same team ever again. They're going to have to break them up. Someone's going to get sold. Blah, blah, blah. But nothing really happened. Draymond Green basically came out and explained the situation in a roundabout way. Um, and the organization basically said they're going to deal with it internally. But the main reason why is because, you know, uh, Draymond Green is one of the best players in that team from all accounts. He's a leader there. He's a veteran in some accounts too. He's been there, done it. Well, you know, they got that experience. So while the organization like Golden State let him go, given all that experience just because he got into a scuffle and it's again it's a serious scuffle anybody else if you were not a good player you probably would get booed at a team but he's very talented so he doesn't get booed at a team same thing could be said for Yeezy if we take Kanye's word to be gospel he didn't he mentioned recently that um supposedly flipping Yeezy accounts for like 80 percent of online I guess orders or something like that if that's the case then it makes complete sense why these executives at Adidas would sit in a white room on these really uncomfortable stores, letting Kanye play German porn to them free flipping iPhone because he's fucking Kanye West and because he accounts for 80% of their sales, which uh, you would assume is some way linked to the bonuses that they get at the end of every year or whatnot. So it makes complete sense why they indulge him. 
that's always been the reason. And I've always said to myself, or I've always said in my little community of people that I talk to, and often considering Kanye on forums and stuff, the main reason why I always think why he's always been like this and why it hasn't changed is because throughout the years he's been indulged. He's been indulged to the point where he, even his friends around him can't call him out. And now that he's made as much money as God, you know, it's impossible to call him out to tell him anything because he's basically, in his head, completed life. So if you can't help him, you know, advance any stages, he's not going to basically listen to you. Even to the point where he's saying, if you're broken than me, I'm not listening to you. But that's the reason why he's got indulged. He got indulged all those times, all those years, because he makes great music phenomenal music genius level music he put on amazing live shows um his fashion was pretty um genre defining in a way it kind of started a lot of trends it captivated a whole group of people maybe not something that you're interested in but people love their yeezys i always say when yeezys first came out they might have been one of the first times i saw a large a very varied and large group of people wearing a limited edition shoe like you'd see like an, an you know an italian dad shopping in selfridges wearing a pair of free free 50s you see some mom on a shop wearing a pair of free, like it was amazing to see that level of a sneaker appeal to so many different people not just sneakerheads so clearly he's got something so that makes complete sense why i just haven't dumped him because anybody else yes brendan dude is right anybody else would have got dumped but when you're kanye when you're Draymond Green, when you're these big people, you don't get cut. And then the last story I want to mention is some dude, I forgot his name. He's an American football player. He's the one that made a joke like, oh, CTE, CTE flying up. Whoever that guy is. He shared this story where he was in college and I imagine he was probably a stud back then. And he got into an argument with one of his teammates and he basically knocked him out in the change room, like punched him, one punch, bang. And he broke the kid's jaw even. And he just got taken into the flipping change room what they get to the office or something and some and the manager started berating him says some joke to him or something and basically they kind of forgot about it never spoke about it again and just kind of continued on and nothing happened but why did that get allowed because he's a star player star players always get star treatment it just always is what it is because you know they're usually the rare thing to find a star player that's really good that adds something to your team or to your organization so it makes sense why they wouldn't want to dump or cut ties with Kanye because he has essentially made them i wouldn't say relevant but he's helped them a lot in terms of a business so they can't go that quickly in terms of cutting them off they have to maybe approach it with some level of caution and maybe even hope that it's just a little period it's just a little um phase because kanye has this he goes you know he comes online he pisses everybody off he starts engaging and then he disappears for another six months so maybe they're hoping that he, this will be it he'll just disappear for another six months everyone will forget about this and they can keep pumping out their yeezys and colors that he doesn't like maybe but i just thought the tweet was funny because it's like a you're not really paying attention to what's actually happening and who it actually involves but hey i understand the idealism in it i understand the idealism <laughs>